Hey there, it's Jennifer Balkin, and I'm here to show you a tip on how to get that wow in, in your painting regarding eyes. Uh, I hear from a lot of people and students and others that painting eyes is some of the toughest part of painting a portrait. And arguably, eyes are some of the most compelling parts of our portraits, being the windows of the soul. Um, and so I want to offer you um, a method that I think uh, makes good sense of how, how to get this information on your canvas in a, in a beautiful and naturally looking way. And, um, and so for, for one thing, let me just start by saying that getting the likeness of the eye is not about the eyeball. It is about the housing that the eyeball lives in. So it's in a socket. It's in a hole in your head. <laughs> so, um, so basically, it is, it is shadowed by everything around it. It's housed. So what that means is um, in getting the likeness of somebody's eye is about getting the likeness of the housing structure of all of the information that, that lives around the eye. The eyeball is a round thing. Um, it's housed in lids, um, so this skin around it. And it's, it lives uh, beneath the brow ridge. So the brow actually shadows it a little bit. So all of it is in a bit of shadow. Of course, this does depend on your lighting scenario. But, um, but for the most part, the eye is typically uh, much less illuminated than anything else on the head. So um, to demonstrate this, I've brought in uh, a few studies. Uh, these are eye studies that I've done um, in my class uh, off of a live model. And I'm, I'm going to show you what, what I call my rule of three. And it's really my rule of at least three. And so what I like to do is break down planes into at least three. I, in order to convey this three-dimensionality of the eye, I encourage my students to apply at least three different um, s strokes with value, color, and temperature in mind. And so basically, color and temperature alternates as value goes up or down, or whatever the case may be. So looking at this eye, for example, here is where the nose would be, and this is the bridge. And right here, it's very dark and warm. So there's a discrete stroke that's, that's a dark, warm, value. And then as we move along um, right into this eyelid here, we get a little cooler and then a little warmer and lighter and then we get darker and darker and this creates the illusion of roundness on the lid. Um, bottom lid, very similar. Uh, it's darker in the corners right there. So we can, we can feel the illusion of uh, turning a form gets lighter right, right here, or closer to the viewer on the front plane. Um, the eyebrow, a rookie painting mistake is to treat the eyebrow as, as, oops, as a monolithic uh, strip of value, where the eyebrow lives on a round form as well, turns across the forehead, and therefore should be treated as such. Um, so here in this eyebrow, we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, actually, six values happening. Dark, warm, cooling off, um, getting lighter, then going darker again. And with that, you can feel the eyebrow moving around the form. The eyeball itself is a ball, so it's round, of course. And even the eyeball inside is treated with different value and um, uh, color. So what's happening here is that the eyeball is being shadowed by its upper lid. So the upper half of the eyeball will have a, a, have a slightly darker value than the lower half of the eyeball. Thanks for watching my tip, y'all. And if you'd like to learn a lot more about my approach to painting a portrait, check out my video.